Harley and Ravenpaw trotted side by side along a path marked by deer hoofs and the occasional sweep of a fox's tail. Pine trees took over the woods, and through the tatty lines of their trunks, Ravenpaw glimpsed a pale swath of golden fence that marked the boundary with Two Lake Place. As they grew closer, pungent scents of Two Lake dens, monster fumes, and kitty pets washed over them. They still don't come very far into the forest, Ravenpaw commented as he paused by a tree stump to sniff a kitty pet mark. Barley glanced over his shoulder at the dense tangle of trees. I can't imagine it looks more inviting now than it did when the clans were here. Kitty pets have everything they want from their two legs, don't they? Food, shelter, company, all without having to make any effort. Ravenpaw looked sideways at his friend. Kinda like us, then, <laughs> he teased. Barley bristled. At least we catch our own prey. Ravenpaw purred. Though, another jab of pain in his belly reminded him that he needed to be more careful about what he ate. The barn provided good hunting, but he couldn't assume that every catch would make good fresh kill. They padded side by side through the long grass at the base of the wooden fence. It felt cool and welcoming under Ravenpaw's feet, and he reflected that it had been a long time since he had walked this far. Life on the farm had made him soft. Suddenly, there was a hiss above their heads. Oi! You down there! What are you doing? Ravenpaw Barley looked up. A ragged furred brown tabby was crouched on top of the fence, glaring down at them. A scar across his muzzle and notches in his ear suggested that he wasn't afraid of a fight. We're just passing through, Barley called. Don't worry. In a flash, the tabby Tom sprang down from the fence and blocked their path. His tail lashed. I'll decide what I worry about. Thank you, he growled. He had stretched out his neck and sniffed. You're not from around here. You don't smell like kitty pets, but you don't smell like the woods either. Who are you? We live on a farm, Barley began. The Ravenpaw cut him off. Calm down. We're not doing any harm, he meowed. The tabby curled his lip. I don't like the look of you, he snarled. This is my home, he nodded to the two-legged den on the other side of the fence. And I claim all hunting rights in this part of the woods. You're not welcome. And you're ridiculous, thought Ravenpaw. But he was tired and his belly hurt, and a fight was the last thing he wanted. Come on, he muttered to Barley. Let's go. They started to walk around the kitty pet, but he sprang after them, claws unsheathed. You don't think you're getting away that easily, do you? He let out a yowl, and in a heartbeat, more faces popped up along the fence. Ravenpaw scanned them in alarm. Kitty pets, yes, but also one or two of them looked too mean and scrawny to share two like dents. I, I think we should get out of here, he whispered to Barley, who nodded. There's no need for a fight, Barley announced. We're leaving. Ravenpaw and Barley set off again, but the wooden fence rattled behind them as several cats jumped down into the forest. Run! screeched Ravenpaw, and without looking back, he and Barley pelted along the edge of the trees. Ravenpaw felt his chest start to burn, and the ache in his belly sharpened with every footstep. From the noises behind them, he could tell that some of the cats had given up, but enough stayed in pursuit to keep Ravenpaw in flight. His fighting days were long gone, and all he wanted to do was get out of this place, back to the safety of the barn. They followed the long curve of the fence until the woods fell away and the ground dropped down beside them to the vast, stench-filled thunder path. They were running along a narrow strip of earth now, trapped by the high fence on one side and the cliff on the other. The barn lay in the other direction, and Ravenpaw started to wonder if they would ever find their way back. Ravenpaw felt his legs start to slow. Beside him... Barley slowed too. Keep going, Ravenpaw, he panted. There was a joyful yowl behind them, as if the tabby Tom could tell his prey was weakening. What is going on? The air was split with a shriek from the top of the fence, and an orange shape slammed onto the ground at Ravenpaw's heels. He stumbled to a halt and spun around to see a she-cat arching her back and hissing, her eyes furious slits. Oh great, another angry kitty pet. <gasps> Violet? Barley gasped. Ravenpaw blinked. It's Barley's sister. Barley! cried the orange cat. In a heartbeat, she whipped around to face the cats in pursuit. Stop right there, Madrick! 
she ordered. To Ravenpaw's surprise, the brown tabby skidded to a stop. The two cats behind him almost crashed into him. Go away, Violet, he snarled. These cats were trespassing. Nonsense, spat Violet. This is my brother Barley and his friend Ravenpaw. They're welcome anywhere. Do you understand? She flattened her ears at the tabby Tom. Anywhere. The tabby hissed, but he flicked his tail at the cats who had kept pace with him. Come on, he growled. I don't think they'll bother us again. He narrowed his eyes at Ravenpaw. You way out of your depth here, old cat, he jeered. Go back to your nest. Violet stepped in front of him. Enough, she snapped. With a final growl, the hostile cats turned and trotted away. Violet tipped her head to one side, studying Barley and Ravenpaw. Well, you two looked better the last time I saw you. Barley shrugged. <laughs> Our bones are getting a little old for this kind of thing, he admitted. His eyes brightened, and he rubbed his head against Violet's cheek. It's been too long, sister. How are you? I'm well, she declared. And I have something to show you. She led the way to a hole at the foot of the fence. Before squeezing through, she glanced back at Ravenpaw. Are you okay? Did one of those cats injure you? Ravenpaw shook his head, still breathless.